This is Hope Link's Adult Education Department. I am Janie James, the supervisor, and I'd like to introduce you to Kelly Graham, one of our ESL education coordinators. She's going to be sharing about ESL and how she feels about it and what she likes about it and just some cool stuff. So let's turn to Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hello. So what attracted you to ESL in the first place? Initially, I think it was just the thought of being able to interact with people from other cultures. Um, but as I've, as I've grown as an ESL teacher and as I've had more years of experience, what keeps me attracted to it is um, being able to see students reach their goals. Sometimes they're small goals and sometimes they're big goals, but that's really what keeps me engaged in teaching ESL. So do you have to be an extroverted person to be an ESL instructor? Are you an extrovert? <laughs> I'm not an extrovert. Uh, that's in my advanced English classes. That's one of the ways that I like to start class as like a warm-up activity. I like to have students ask each other, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Um, and then they ask me and I always tell them I'm an introvert and they're, the students are always shocked because I'm able to, eh, I don't know, I adapt and use use my skills even though I'm an introvert. I'm able to, I've learned to facilitate groups and to be in front of students. So what are one of the favorite things that you're doing in program these days? Um, one of my favorite things is uh, doing the English for Work program which is a class designed to help immigrants and refugees get jobs and prepare for employment in the United States. Several of my students are looking for work in the United States for the first time. They have no experience in the United States, and so it's really rewarding to learn with them about the cultural differences and to help prepare them um, in a really practical way for their life here. You've been adding some um, online components to your classes. Um, how's that felt? Have you ex experienced in that, or are you just learning? Um, yeah, so... The English for Work class that I'm coordinating and teaching right now meets twice a week in person, but I've also created a class blog on Google where students go on the blog um, numerous times each week to work on their homework. They use the blog to uh, take quizzes on material that we've been covering, and they also use the blog to go to YouTube video links and to work on their listening skills. Um, I'm finding it to be a really great way for students to practice English at home. And for some of those students who don't have computer skills, I'm able to sit with them one-on-one -on -one and kind of coach them on how to move the mouse and how to use the shift key to capitalize their names when they're typing, and it's just been really rewarding to see pro the progress that they're making in both English and computers. I wonder if you could share one of your um, favorite moments in um a class. Something that touched you, something that was really memorable. Mm -hmm. I think there's so many memorable moments I'm having trouble thinking <laughs> of just one. Um, but I have a, a really clear image of one class where one of my students had a job interview coming up and so uh, one of my volunteers took this student to the back of the classroom and they sat back to back and talked on the phone with each other on their cell phones doing a practice phone interview. And while this was happening, the rest of the students in the class were um, just getting really excited for the student and were giving him a lot of positive feedback. So we saw, I saw a volunteer really helping a student in a practical way, but also the students coming together as a group to support one another and to, to encourage one another as they're trying to reach their goals. So I know you encourage students to reach goals, but what would you say is one of your career goals maybe five years out? I don't think of it. I'm just so content right now with my job. That's what a supervisor <laughs> likes to hear. <laughs> I'm, I'm each, with each new batch of students that I get, uh, we have our classes on a pretty much quarterly basis, so I'm always getting new groups of students, and with each new group I'm learning more and more about how to teach ESL, and so I'm just constantly challenged and 
I, I never, I always feel like I have a new job every couple of months, so I don't get bored. <laughs> what advice might you give to somebody who might want to volunteer in our program? Um, for a volunteer, I would recommend openness to learning new skills. Um, it, I think I'm an example of someone who came into this field initially not having any of the skills, especially being a, an introvert, um, but as the years have passed, I've slowly gained more and more skills, and that's been really rewarding. So just that openness, I think, is really key in a volunteer. How about for a student? What's a student got to look forward to coming to Hope Link ESL? A student, what do they have to look forward to? Yeah, well, <laughs> or what should we warn them about? <laughs> I think Hope Link is a special place for students because um, we kind of have that family style classroom in, in a way. Our classes are usually small and um, it really feels like a home when we come together and meet and it's going to a college is it's different. College The colleges have excellent programs but it is more like doing something, you're walking through the doors of this big, big building and it can be intimidating. Um, so Hope Link is more of a home place. It's a great place for ESL students to get started if they have some fear of education. Uh, and also we provide, not only are we like a family environment, but we provide good challenges for our students. For example, like with my online blog, challenging them to interact with technology more. So. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs>